welcome. This is Harriet Grayson, your host and producer of Community Culture Showcase. And we're going on with our programs despite the chaos surrounding us. We don't want to stop. We want to make sure all of the people around us have information about what's going on in our wonderful community. And despite many, many restrictions, we have some lovely events happening all over the place. And I'd like to talk today about one and one of my very favorites. I've actually had this guest on my program in the past. And I'm here to support the Westerly Armory, one of those beautiful, beautiful buildings that has so much historical value to the town and to the community and to many men and women who served in the armed forces. It's just a wonderful, wonderful asset. And with me today is the founder, the president. The president. Yes, the president. <laughs> I like that. President. Founder and president. Pro okay. Founder and president. Roberta Humble, who's been at this job at, as a volunteer. Yes. For years. 28 years. 28 years making this building accessible to the public. Yes. And providing us with an assortment of history in a wonderful, wonderful way. Both the history of Westerly and the history of the armory itself. So tell us a little bit about your wonderful 27-year project? Well, I was originally there because of the National Guard, and I was liaison to the unit. And since I was born and raised in Westerly, even though I live in Warwick now because of my teaching at the college, um, I found that uh, when I went back after all those years for, from when I was a kid, um, that the armory had changed in not such a nice way. It was... Uh, they had band-aided it, and they had not made it nice, um, and they didn't have the money to really do the things that needed to be done, and so on. Uh, remember, they didn't have things like a fire alarm system or sprinklers or anything like that, in addition to normal structural considerations. So um, they left in 96, because I started it in the fall of 92, and... We decided that, uh, well, originally we were just going to restore the building. Then we had to find a use for it because you don't want to just restore a building to restore a building. I mean, it's nice, and if you have the money, sure, you can do it, but that's what most people don't have. So what we did was we it found its own path. It's become a museum because people would trot in with things. Now, granted, we get a lot of military things because it's an armory. And we love the military because when I was a kid, the military was there and the community still used it for car shows, antique shows, poultry shows, boxing, Rocky Marciano box there. Ella Fitzgerald sang there. Her husband, uh, Chick Webb, uh, ran the NBC orchestra. They would come in on the train from um, New York City and they would uh, uh, sing there and play there. The dances there, people met their spouses there over time. We hear all these stories. So um, with all of that, um, we needed to get it back to that sort of thing. So the drill hall, which is 6,000 square feet with 35-foot ceilings, is an amazing spot because it's the largest space of its kind in the area. And people like it. Now, when Westerly had its 350th anniversary uh, last year, we had um, two nights of the gala because... There were 250 people each night in there dancing with a major orchestra, food being served all over the place. It's one of the few places you can do that. Right, right. It has beautiful maple floors. We have air conditioning, and we have better heat now because we put in a new system about two years ago, which does both. Um, and as I say, it became a museum because people brought things, and then we got community things like things from McCormick's department store, things from the Washington Trust, things from uh, Bradford Dying Association, um, all these stores that in the past and, and the stores that have been with us now continually for so many years. Right. I mean, the Washington Trust is America's oldest community bank founded in 1800. And on top of that, it was the first bank to produce banknotes with a picture of George Washington on them. Interesting little fact. So we show people that when we're touring, uh, we have uh, a major museum room downstairs and two upstairs. Uh, in addition, upstairs, we have the, uh, the Westerly Band. Their home is there. The Westerly Band is America's oldest active community band, founded in 1852. 
and they have their storage there. Uh, they have their office there. And uh, we use the cellar. I will say that a lot of people like me to call it the lower level, but <laughs> I'm a common person and it's cellar to me. So, uh, But we have a lot of storage in the cellar. The cellar is huge and it has 14 foot ceilings and windows. So eventually we're going to make, uh, well, part of it will always remain storage. But over time, we hope, we have the design by an architect to do a museum workshop, um, to a, muse a museum card, a museum room, and a community room, and um, accessible bathrooms. And we're recently talking about uh, an elevator, which is tough to put in a building. The head house is small, the drill hall is large. Uh, so we're working on that. That's, that's a tough one for us right now. What was the year, or about the year, that the uh, building was originally built? It was, uh, well, it was built in 1901, dedicated in 1902. Um, it took the place of the armory that was on Main Street down from McQuaid's Marketplace, which burned in 1899. It was a wood frame building mm -hmm. with balloon construction, and it went up like nothing. And uh, I guess there were some explosions, too. Wow. <laughs> because it was an armory. Yeah, oh, with ammunition in there, hey? Yeah. That's yeah. great. And Remember, armory started in rooms and houses because when the population in the 18th century was very small, and when Westerly was very small, there was a house out on one of the roads in Westerly. Um, it's long gone now, the house. But a room in that house was the original armory in Westerly. Wow. wow. And then they built that one in 1862 in, um, uh, on Main Street. And then that burned and ours replaced it in 1901. And what is the building? Do you know what the building was actually uh, constructed of? What kind of materials? Constructed in... What is it made out of? Oh, it's, um, it's uh, Murray Red Granite from Pawkatuck, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And it's um, brick upper. It was designed by William R. Walker and Son Architects. He was from Pawtucket. He did the Pawtucket Armory first. Then he did Westerly. Then he did the Great Providence Armory, which people mistakenly call the Cranston Street Armory. <laughs> he liked it known as Providence. He liked it known. And he did Woonsocket. And he did the Armory of Mounted Commands in Providence and uh, the little Warwick Armory, which there was a w tiny little wooden one in Warwick down from City Hall, and he did that one. Uh, he also did, uh, this architect, William R. Walker, did almost all the city and town halls in Rhode Island, including the Westerly, the Granite. Um, actually, he didn't. I think his son did because he was a Civil War veteran, and that came a little later. I think that's now 102 years old, that oh, particular okay. building. Yes. Wow. All mm -hmm. right. That's great. Now, you have been a uh, self-supporter, band, band cheerleader for the, for the state of Rhode Island, not only Westerly, but Rhode Island itself. Yes. Um, tell us a little bit about what got you into doing all this kinds of stuff promoting the state, the little postage state that really has a great deal to offer for people just uh, visiting or, or people thinking about moving or people thinking about going to college in the state. So give us a little bit of uh, all those wonderful, great facts about the little state of Rhode Island. Oh. Well, Rhode Island was, uh, of course, the 13th colony. And uh, because we're an older state, like Connecticut, uh, we have more heritage than some, you know, a deeper heritage than some of the other states, although they have beautiful heritage too, but we just have an older heritage uh, for that reason. Uh, Rhode Island has always been either first or last of, at anything, and uh, we were last to sign this and first to do that. And, of course, we've always been under the, I don't know, um, shadow of Massachusetts. Uh, they had a tea party, and I think that seemed very festive or something because <laughs> people seemed to like that one. But we, uh, Rhode Island had the first armed act of rebellion, the Gaspi Affair, where uh, these people planned. I mean, this wasn't just a quick uh, thought. They, tr they took down uh, the British ship HMS Gaspi, and it was well planned because they were being overtaxed and so on. There was reason for it. We don't need to go through the whole history. But they actually brought, uh, they waited for the moon to be right, the tide to be right. They had to plan ahead. And they had people coming in from Bristol. They would come up uh, the river and so forth. It was fascinating. Um, we are, um, I have a card called the Rhode Island card, and it has firsts on one side and uniques on the other. Uh, there isn't much that we're not first in. Uh, we're first to have, in America, we're first to have almost every sport in the nation. Uh, golf. 
mm -hmm. uh, where you know where the birthplace of the U.S. Open. Okay. Uh, tennis, because we have the Tennis Hall of Fame. We had the first tennis courts in the nation. Polo, we had the first polo in the nation. Even roller skating, we had the first roller skating rink in the nation. We had the first auto race on an uh, on a track in the nation. We had the birthplace of NASCAR. Oh, um, there we go. Where we had the first uh, winning baseball champions, world champions, the Providence Grays. We had world champion football. They were also they were known as the Providence Steamrollers. Uh, we had the Calder Cup winners in ice hockey. <laughs> so as you can see, and in basketball, we didn't form it. Massachusetts, uh, Mr. Naismith created it, but it was Rhode Island that, it was a very slow game, and Rhode Island sped it up. So in the 1940s, Rhode Island uh, Rams were at uh, the uh, then Rhode Island State College, now the University of Rhode Island. Um, they, uh, Coach Keeney there uh, got the whole thing rolling, and they were world famous. RKO made movies of them. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we have, uh, it's amazing. Of course, we have wonderful uh, universities. We have 12 colleges. We have an Ivy League, the seventh oldest college in the nation, Brown. Uh, we have the University of Rhode Island, which has, of course, uh, the best, probably at least one of the three best, if not the best, oceanography uh, school, uh, as well as uh, they're, they're very high up in pharmacy, engineering, and so on. Um, Bryant with his business and so on. It's every, every one of the colleges has its strength. And one of the things I do, I do 12 presentations. I always try to bring in information about Rhode Island. And people are like my presentations because, well, I, I use PowerPoint and a lot of pictures, which people like. Uh, but they didn't know that we had that much going. I mean, I could sit here and probably do three hours on first, best, and uniques. <laughs> I could. It's, it's, and I just, I mentioned sports as one, but it is just out, outstanding what we have done. Um, For we were the first place. state to have a law to abolish slavery. Okay. In 1652, they did not enforce it. That was done later, but, uh, and, uh, because there was a lot of slave trading in passing through Rhode Island and through uh, uh, the Underground Railroad and so on. But um, uh, it's a fascinating history our country has. And we've grown from that, and we've learned from it. And it takes time to, to get used to things. I always used to tell my students it was like smoking. This is not such a moral issue, so I can discuss it a little better. But um, I can remember the days, because I'm older, and I used to tell the students that, that people were allowed to smoke in this classroom. And everybody went, oh, you know. <laughs> but I said, well, times change. And we've adjusted. But I said, when they first put in the law, everybody ran into bathrooms. And I mean, remember, <laughs> hide in closets, smoking, and, and so on. Um, but now people are pretty good about it. Remember the restaurants with half seating, right? smoking, non-smoking? And what about planes? Half the plane, you could smoke in, in the back. You, and then the other, the front of it, you couldn't right. smoke. Yeah. Just a, the air would pick it up anyway and give everybody the smoke. Right, right. But yes, yes, things do change. Yeah, things have changed. Generally, they, they, they improve. It takes a while, and that's a simple thing. That's not a moral issue, so it's mm -hmm. a little easy to deal with. But I said it takes time. It takes generations sometimes to change. Because it took us almost a generation to do that. Mm -hmm. And yes. that's a simple thing. Right, exactly. Although exactly. I suppose it's not simple if you're addicted to it. But well. uh, <laughs> and I do, and I do sympathize because people, you know, once that's a habit, it's a hard habit to break. It's well. true. I used to smoke. I can tell you that from did you? Yes, I did. Uh, I did indeed. Ah, I'm just glad I never did because I, I would hate to go through the addiction thing, you know, that that process. Because I imagine how difficult was it difficult? Oh, it is, and it took year, and it actually took years. So I didn't s wake up one morning and say I'm not going to smoke anymore. I just slowly smoked. Less and less. Wow, you were good. Yes, and so yeah. it did take take a while. But uh, again, I mean, things and attitudes towards that have changed dramatically. I mean, everybody in my household, when I was a kid growing up, everybody smoked. My mother smoked, mm -hmm. my father smoked, everybody smoked. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just people like my grandparents who, you know, didn't weren't born in this country, they they didn't smoke. But everybody, uncles, aunts, everybody smoked. And then people got wise, the health problems associated with smoking became much more known. Mm -hmm. 
and then slowly people start But you have to, to do it gradually because it's hard because it like with the people who are addicted, even if they want to get out and are trying to get out, it's going to take them a while. Well, Just that alone, never mind the, the mindset that you want to do it. It's very difficult. So, yeah, uh, I think, you know, that's why what the country today needs to, it's, you know, t take stock that we're doing very well. But you've got to be a little bit patient with yourself, too. You, can, you don't want to give in to yourself, but you want to be patient. That's important. So tell us a little bit about some of the things that are going to happen on November 1st, which is going to be our, you describe it, because I call this an annual crafts, antiques, and Author. Rhode Island Authors, uh, a great event. So tell us a little bit about it. It's pr pretty new. It's not something yes, you've been doing for years. We renamed it this year. We call it, it's only our second year, and we wanted a better name, so we just call it the Armory Show now. It's simple, a yes. And the main reason we do that is that we have crafters, uh, antique people, and uh, Rhode Island authors. So uh, we're just tickled uh, to uh, ha have them all. It's a good mix. Um, it's a good variety. And we were uh, careful. This year we were probably a little bit more lax because of the COVID thing, but uh, we like different crafts. Like we only allowed two jewelers last year and we only have two jewelers this year. You know, they make their own and, and so forth. We have a pearl one and a silver one this year. Well, that's um, variety, yes. We have Seco yeah. Suites. Now, Seco Suites is newer. They were founded only a couple years ago, and they're up in Pawtucket, Rhode Island, and they are high-end chocolate patties. They're filled with everything from peanut butter like the Reese's Cups, only even better, mm -hmm. um, or um, mint, or um, I've forgotten. They've got a, a number of mixes of them. Um, they're expensive to buy online, but they are worth it. Uh, you know, if you want a really nice gift or something, and when they mail it, it has the most beautiful box, and, and they tie it with that satin ribbon, too. And so when you get it, it's just a lovely present. But they're going to be there, and that'll be their first appearance at a show, really. Uh, they've done, um, they sell to places like the Ocean House in mm -hmm. Westerly, and they sell to Massachusetts places. Uh, they see themselves as New England. Okay. And, uh, but they're beautiful. So we're lucky to have them. Uh, we've got a wood carver coming. He does bowls and so forth. Okay. We, we originally had one coming from Connecticut, and he dropped out about a month ago because he was a little bit worried about COVID, and we can understand that. So, um, but uh, today, <laughs> out of the blue, somebody said he, he'd heard the, about the show, and he said, do you think you'd have room for me? And we had one booth left. And so... We, uh, we gave him that booth, so that'll be beautiful. Uh, we have somebody who makes special bookmarks. They're unlike anything you've ever seen. They're not just a little flat thing. They're, they're, they run differently, and they keep your place differently. So uh, it's hard to describe those. Um, what else have we got? We've got somebody who does woven goods. We've got, of course, 10 Rhode Island authors, all mm. different. Um, some people do, uh, there's one that does youth novels. They're not kids' books. They're youth novels. And... Uh, other people who are doing, uh, like you, you're going to be there. I am indeed. What, I what am you indeed. Bringing? I'm going to bring my book. I'll just show here to the camera. And we have the, the terrorist. I will be there. I write mysteries under a pen name, Anastasia Goodman. And that's how I, um, I've got three of these novels. And I have a little place for myself. You can come. I can autograph the books for you. Uh, this is The Terrorist, which is my newest one. I don't want to put too much more plugs in for myself, but there will be other authors. Now, you are an author. Yes, I'll be there. I, of course, I do both games and books. Yes, you're, you're multi-talented. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not a novelist like you. I don't have that skill, but um, uh, I put together Rhode Island things. My books are all Rhode Island. Um, I wrote everything from, and I don't, I'm not selling this because we only have about 20 copies left at this point, The Historic Armories of Rhode Island. There are 18 of those. Uh, I'm very proud of that book, though. But uh, The Right to Crow um, is my best-selling book. We sold 20,000 of those. Um, it's First Best and Uniques of Rhode Island. Okay. Uh, Rhode Island's Friendly Faces, which is my children's book, where the, wi the Sherman Windmill from Portsmouth goes all around the state visiting his historic buildings and uh, saying hi to his friends there, and that's kind of fun. I have a game book. Um, I've got a quiz book, uh, and then I have seven games, and there are, I think there's seven books and seven games right now. Uh, I sold out of two games. I sold 6,500 roadsides and 4,500 road scholars. That's wonderful. So, That's wonderful. And my new game this year is The Road Not Taken. Mm. And um, I brought, I'm not going to get it out. I'll just hold up the can. But The Road Not Taken is kind of adorable. 
Um, and it's going to be cheaper at the Armory. All my books and, and games are going to be a little bit less expensive at the Armory because normally I just do wholesale. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they, they can get that price. But this is a conversational game. Um, and this takes this particular game is, has trivia in it, but you don't have to know the trivia. So that if you're one of those people who worries about being embarrassed, you can still play this game. Whereas I do have trivia games too. <laughs> It'll and it's fun. very conveniently small, my goodness gracious, that little game. Yes. Yeah, you can take that on any road trip you want to go on. I buy the, um, the cans um, and the boxes normally from California. I like to do local, but I do all local printing and so forth. Yes. But Because uh, I have to buy thousands of these at a time, and we don't sure. have a place. But it's cute, and people like the cuteness of it. Uh, this game, by the way, would be terrific for like Thanksgiving when the family, if the family can get if, together. If, if, yes, yes. <laughs> well, whoever you are with, you know, yes. it's great sport. Yes. Uh, you can't get into too much trouble with this game either. So, Absolutely. Which is good. And also you're wearing a vest with the uh, armory on it. Oh, thank you. Yes. yes. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, we think they're, they're fleece. They're fleece vests. We'll be selling these. All the board has them. The board members uh, will wear them for different events. But um, we're selling them. They're $39. They're fleece. They're zip. They have pockets. Um, they're great. And it's they're nice all going to, a not to the to the uh, to the care and upkeeping of the of the armory. I mean, right. This goes to the armory. And my bag. If I may mention. Yeah, go ahead. Hold it my, up. Okay. My bag. There we are. Um, it, it zips on the top. And maybe you can see this. I'm terrible. I don't know what camera I'm at. But anyhow, <laughs> uh, it does zip. And it has side pockets, which is great. So you can put your cell phone again. In it also for the support and benefit of the armory. Yes. I mean this this is the uh, the this is the 20, 21st century merchandising by nonprofits. It also it helps. Well, it helps help. pays the bills. Absolutely. That's now, why. Now I know you brought some photographs that you wanted to show yes. us as well. Mm -hmm. So let's see some of those photographs. We've got some beautiful ones of the building. Now this is the building. It is. It looks like a castle. It does. William R. Walker took it from um, European design castles, but it's interesting. The Europeans took it from the Middle East design. So, <laughs> you know, we all take stuff. You're all stealing from yes, each other. We're exactly. All, we're exactly. all more alike than we are different. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Well, I love the, uh, it looks like it's going to protect and fortify the town of Wesley against armed invaders. I mean, well, we're ready. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the, the funny thing is with, with it, that by the looks of it, uh, we use the side door. See the car over on the left? Yes. The side door is right about there. There's two doors on the side. One go There's a ramp, a handicapped access ramp that goes up to the back of the building. And then the side door, in, this, the front is called the head house, and the back is called the drill hall or drill shed. Uh, but people are, are hesitant to come in because it's not like a regular place where you have windows and doors and so on because it's an armory, and it was built to protect, and you're not supposed to see in. So... Uh, and of course, we want to keep the doors original. We're not going to replace them. But that, yeah, people should come and see the architecture. It's worth it's it. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. And of course, you have that that archway that lay, leads you inside. And when when we got it, when I first started it, do you see those things at the top? The little they're cre they're crenellations. This, the, uh, the parapets are crenellated. Okay. Right above the 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 uh, horizontal line, so to speak. Uh, all those were basically gone when I was there. Uh, and five hundred thousand dollars later, they're back, and they're topped with Wesley granite. Oh, nice, very nice. But the first ones came down before nineteen thirty. This the lower ones came down uh, probably in the thirty-eight hurricane. Mm. We don't, we're not sure about that because right. we don't have documentation on it. Okay. The Wesley sign, the granite sign out front, which says Wesley Armory, was done recently um, uh, by Camoli. Well, when I say recently, about uh, fifteen years ago by Camoli Granite. Mm -hmm. And we missed Dick Camoli because he was wonderful and wonderful granite company. So yeah. also, I can just tell you, as being a resident, the uh, the armory has lots of parking because on Sunday nobody, it's basically unlimited parking on the street is available. Right. And and yeah. and, and, and the armory is literally down the street from the from the train station. So I mean, if there were family members or friends that you have, you can have them come actually take the train. Amtrak is really looking for business. Um, and it's a short hop from either Boston or New York. You take the train, you can come right down. Yes. And there's the armory. 
only about and 200 yards from this train station. Yeah. So it's a it's a it's a it's a wonderful kind of weekend that you can have uh, with some friends and family if you want to bring them. And and they are going to in the armory. They are going to do everything possible to keep it safe, given what's going on with this. Uh, with this COVID business. Yes, um, we're, we're, we're using the thermometers, the hand um, sanitizer, we're ventilating, we've got people spaced, we're allowing so many at a time in. It's important. Yes, and they've- And, they've and masks. Yeah, and they've scrubbed the floors, they've scrubbed everything, it's- uh, The tables are Clorox. So. Yeah, so <laughs> there's, you know, there's, you know, not to worry about the, about the germs. It, and, on a Sunday, it's a nice afternoon event. It's from 10 o'clock in the morning to 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Most people do most of their shopping at 10 o'clock right. in the morning. But the day look, after Halloween. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, you come with the, with the family and, and have a good time and, and support the armory by supporting the vendors. And if you've never been inside the building, it's a, it's a great little treat. And the drill hall, just as Roberta was describing, is really a beautiful, beautiful space. Just a, just a beautiful space. Um, it's much larger than it looks. When people come in, they go, oh, we didn't know it was this big from mm -hmm, outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So we'll be in the back. That, the whole back thing, which you can barely see because the head house is in front, um, is the drill hall. Yes, uh -huh. yes. Yeah. And um, we have some more photos. All right, let's move on. Okay, we're gonna see two museum photos. This is one. This is in the upstairs museum room, which is a portion of it. This is Westerly Women's Corner. We, we have women all around the Armory, but we have a special corner for them as well. Uh, the one in furs there is Mary Clancy, uh, who used to, um, she is deceased now, but she is well known in Westerly. Uh, she had over 300 hats. She was the best dressed of any woman in Westerly. <laughs> and the one closer to us is Mary Jane DeMeo, the first woman town council president oh. in Westerly. Uh, the gown you see in the window is a 1971 wedding gown uh, designed uh, after the uh, sixth wife of Henry VIII, mm -hmm. uh, Catherine Parr. So that's, um, that's something you will see. You will see community. You won't see just military. You will see military, but you'll also see a lot of community there. Lots of different things, because people are always impressed. Uh, a lot of women get brought by their husbands because the husbands want to see the milita right, military. Right, yeah, they're, they're always surprised. And you have some wonderful old photographs I can see uh, on that desk. That's yes, the those are all women's photos because it's Wesley Women's Corner. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, we have some wonderful uh, things for people to see. Uh, and we have a, a number of wedding gowns. We have one from 1923, mm. 1940, 41, 51, 61, and 71. Wow, and so 40, that yeah. is fantastic. All right, let's see the next picture. Okay, this is another museum room picture. This is downstairs museum room. The fireplace is part of the armory. Walker always put arm, uh, fireplaces in all his armories. Wow. Um, that's a World War I uniform, uh, which I think is amazing. And that's uh, what the officers would have worn in World War I. And the, in the distance, you can see what the enlisted would have worn. And we have a whole bunch of items from World War I there for people to see. Um, so those are, those are two of our museum rooms. We have three museum rooms, and uh, plus we'll take them down cellar if they want to go. I shouldn't use the word cellar. I guess I shouldn't use. No, that it's all right. That's all right. Uh, anyhow, yes. but we have neat things. Now, down I, at the event on November first, you're not going to be doing any museum tours. No, we've been doing museum tours. Believe it or not. Oh yeah. Yeah, we did some last weekend. Um, yeah, m we're open Mondays and Thursdays, nine to four, and by appointment, and for shows. Okay, yeah. all right. But when people come November 1st for the exhibit and, and oh. armory show, the, the, the no. museums will not be open. We can't, no, we no. can't do both. Okay. Uh, no, it would be, and that would be too crowded too, and that would not be good, so. All right, given the circumstances. Okay. We have some more photographs? All oh, right. here we go. This is an event. I put in two event pictures, or maybe it's three. I guess it's three event pictures. This is the quilt show. Uh, at the Armory, and uh, Nindigret Quilters were our first renters, and they do it every other October. Fortunately, they're not doing it this October, <laughs> uh, which is good. They're up for next October, we hope, so. Uh, they did it last October, so. Um, but it, it's just beautiful. The Armory never looks so nice. You get the sense of the wood floors right there, where yes. you can see this woman standing, and also the sense of the height of the room itself. It's 35 foot ceiling. Yeah. And you can see that, and, uh, and uh, what's important also for the event on November 1st, you see the windows. They're gonna 
open those windows so that we get ventilation. Actually, Ariat, we won't have to. Oh. If you open the front door and that side door over there to, okay. the, to the left, you're going to get a windstorm through there. Okay, And it's good. sufficient. If it isn't, we'll open the windows, but I don't think we're going to have to. So anybody who's coming, don't forget and wear a coat. So yes. That's why, I, yeah, I told uh, even the vendors to wear a sweater because it will be cooler. Yes, definitely. We will heat it up, but, you know, with those, it will get good ventilation. There's no doubt about it. And, and for people who are a little hesitant about going out to an inside building, this one is about as safe as it possibly could possibly be. And there are 42 windows in that drill shed, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see the next picture. Okay, that's another event in the drill hall. That's the fanciest ever. That mm. was for the 350th last year, wow. the 350th of Westerly, and they brought in their own chairs. We don't, we don't have the gold chairs. You'll have to rent that. We have 300 of our own. They're folding chairs, but they're padded seats and backs. Right. But th they wanted it even fancier, so uh, away we went there. But it looks beautiful, doesn't it? Oh my gosh, it does. And and uh, when you have music, live music, it also sounds lovely in in the hall because it ricochets off these high ceilings and bounces around and it just gives a nice nice sound yeah it's good i i the acoustic instruments are perfect in there once they start with the electronic instruments i i find that not as good i find the the acoustic instruments are perfect so let's have another picture here uh that's another one of that's our event that's member appreciation evening one year and uh, we that's how we deck it out uh, we don't do the, uh, you can see the ceiling from this. Mm -hmm. um, the drapery sort of thing, we have a card from the person who does it. She does lovely work. She has a whole crew that comes in and does it. But um, it's it's expensive, and we don't, you know, we're careful with our money. So, uh, But I think it looks very nice anyhow. Has very handsome, do what very is. deep. Yes, but we absolutely. use the seat covers. We have 300 white seat covers and lots of different colored bows and so on. And I think it dresses it up quite nicely. It does. It's a perfect for a wedding. It is. We, we rent out for wedding receptions. We rent out for actually boxing and wrestling. Oh. Because, um, well, true to form, as I said, Rocky Marciano box there. Why can't other people? Those people are very easy to work with, and they take very good care of the armory. Oh, that's interesting. So. Interesting. All right, let's go to another picture. Uh, this is upstairs. It's not a great picture of the Wesley Band room, but I wanted the drum in there. That's one of their oldest drums. Mm -hmm. The Wesley Band is America's oldest active community band. Uh, founded in 1852, and they have their home at the Armory, uh, with, not with COVID, but <laughs> uh, normally they practice every Wednesday evening, and they um, have the, they usually give free lessons to people, particularly older people who used to play an instrument and really would like to get back into it. They've been very generous to the community that way, so uh, we're pleased to have them with us. And they have played, uh, they play all over town and, and, and also all over the state, for all kinds of events. Now, if we had a normal summer, you probably would have seen them in Wilcox Park mm -hmm. uh, performing. Uh, we haven't had a normal summer, so. Uh, but they'll be they'll be back, and they are uh, you know just part and parcel of what's what's going what actually this little town of Westerly can offer not only residents but visitors who come around. So I mean. The, the chamber doesn't need um, you know, doesn't need to be here. We're we're the chamber, <laughs> <laughs> we're substitutes for the chamber promoting this little town, which is uh, making beautiful headway. Well, the the band did twenty one concerts um, the last full year. Yeah. So uh, yeah, they they do amazing things, and they do a Christmas concert at the Armory normally every year. I don't think they're going to do it this year. We mm -hmm. are having a Christmas concert by the Westminster String Youth Ensemble this year. Uh, they are going to start practicing after our show that week. Oh, okay. They are going to start. Uh, they they come in once a week, or I think, and, and practice um, because they they had they like to do the setup there a couple of times before their concert. Yeah, yeah definitely. That's wonderful. Wonderful. Do we have anything else? Oh, oh yes, we oh. have. Oh, <laughs> that's well. That's my house in Warwick, and um, uh, those are my books and games. As you can see, there's a lot of them. <laughs> 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 uh, a, prof a prolific writer and game right yeah. and game maker. Yeah, I love my new house. I moved there five years ago. I lived on Warwick Neck for forty years, but um, I moved to uh, Connecticut, which is a part of Warwick. It's on the water. I I, I ride on the water. I'm right on the bay, salt water, which is nice. Um, you can see my little ram down there and my little cockatoo dressed in Coast Guard paraphernalia. <laughs> One of the crafters at the show last year at Wesley at, at our armor show last year, uh, he he made those for me. I commissioned them. 
Um, so the little ram, I'm a URI fan. So uh, they, we have the ram. And <laughs> I have cockatoos. I have birds. And uh, Coast Guard is my favorite service. So he's dressed in cockatoo uniform. <laughs> but you can see my book. The, you can see the armory on one of the books. Yes, yes. Yeah, I can see the, the picture. Book. Yep. We yes. only have about 20 copies of that left at this point. I've got to redo it before. I'm not going to just have it reprinted. I'm going to uh, revise it. Uh, but uh, um, I haven't had the opportunity to do that. I do have a little booklet, which is to the left of it, uh, which I did 20 years ago, and then I revised it last year with mm -hmm. a grant. And we printed, I think, 3,000, and we distributed them to the 18 historic armies, so everybody got some. Oh, which okay. Was good. Yeah. And the uh, and the um, and in fact, what's in the book is is all information about those 18 armories. Is that you yeah. Uh, well, the the book, the both both the book and the book, the booklet is just short. It has one little quick little picture of each armory and a little blurb about each armory. It's a it's a booklet. The book has information about each armory and pictures. It's in black and white. I'm tempted to have it done. The cover is color, but mm -hmm. I, I tempted to have it done in color. But a lot of the older pictures are black and white anyhow. Right. So sometimes right. it's not worth bothering for yeah, one or it two. Isn't. Yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. Because yeah, people who are interested in armories are willing to go with it. You know, they mm -hmm. don't have to have it's not it's not a children's book, and it, right. you know, it doesn't have to have balloons and <laughs> right. <laughs> it's, not, it's fine. It's uh, it's good. So you notice what the the, the Westerly Armory is on the cover too, which yes, I, of, of course, course, of course, you have to give a, yes. give a plug for what you know the best. I know, I'm always uh, peop, people know me. Even my I, I do uh, presentations, and I I did one for uh, this Newport group. I, I've done it now, I think eight or nine years running. Uh, I do a different presentation each year, and. Um, I remember the last one I was doing roadmap, and I said, and we come to the last um, place, and uh, and I said, I wonder what this is, and and the whole Newport group said, it's the Westerly Armory. <laughs> 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 so, uh, yeah, I try to tuck it into everything, so uh, it gets a little exposure. It's good. Um, you know, it's struggled by itself. It's not a building that people normally cotton to. Uh, it's not like the breakers where people are going to go in and, you know, go ooh, ah, ooh, ah. But you can go ooh ah ooh ah in a different way with the armory because it's a very masculine building. It was there for us. It represents us as Americans, and I'm very proud of that. Right, exactly. So, how did you get involved with you know? Was there some specific thing that happened that you said you know this is going to be my mission, which I'm going to spend 20 years? Uh, mm. <laughs> well, I, I you know I was a professor up at Community College of Rhode Island. I taught technical writing to engineers, and mm -hmm. that's what I did. But I came down because I have a volunteer for employer support of the Guard and Reserve, which nobody it's too much for people to absorb, but. Suffice it to say, when I got down there, I, I, I saw how bad it was. I wanted to do something. A few years later, after I was there, I started the, um, the whole thing. And as I say, I just wanted to kind of restore the building. I just assumed the guard would be there. But then we had to find purpose for it. So things change. Life changes. Right. Life changes every day. Right. So right. you have to exactly. kind of go with it. Um, and I, I'm kind of stubborn. Uh huh. So I will. I have stick to it if power. I don't go away readily until until the, yeah. until the task is completed. Yeah, I think that's it's a it can be good and it can be bad. Yeah. <laughs> but in this case, I think it worked out well um, because I've had to fight through some things which we needn't go into, but some difficult times, shall we say? And it was just. Um, uh, there were times I was in tears. Mm. Um, and Did you get support? I kept thinking about, I don't have to do this. I'm in war. I, I can yeah, leave. I, yeah. you know, just Did you get support from the town? Uh, yeah, at this point, we're getting more support, support from the town just in the last couple of years than, than we have. Um, and we thank them for that. It is a town-owned building. We have had to raise our own money. And basically, we have to raise $75,000 a year for operations. Mm -hmm. That doesn't include restoration. Right, exactly, just to so, keep the lights on. Like right. the crenellations were 500000 The handicapped ramp was $60,000. Uh, this, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing because it's a big building. Mm -hmm. And it's always, and plus there's the, the general maintenance and so forth, which part of that is part of the 75000 for operations. But it's been, it's been a long Hall, uh, and the town, I think, wasn't with us initially, but I think they are now. Um, I think people have gotten to know it. Mm -hmm. I don't think they knew it. it. It was kind of 
forgotten for many years because it went out of code in the 80s. Mm. And then people weren't allowed in there. Oh, okay. okay. So we lost a generation and a half, and right. people forget. Yes, definitely. It's like when, when people die, um, you remember them for a while. I'm not talking close family, but I'm talking right. friend, friendliness, associates, and so on. Right. You remember them, and yeah, maybe every once in a while it'll pop into your head, but as time goes on, it's less and less. Mm -hmm. um, and the same with the armory. Right. It was essentially almost dead. Mm -hmm. So uh, hopefully we've brought it back to life. Uh, we have Cub Scouts in there. I mean, we try to have different things. It's not meant to. We're not the Ocean House, but we're not like the Elks Club and so forth. We're a very different sort of place to use. Well, I would imagine you have, uh, number one, a community uh, spirit is part of the mission of having an armory like that in the first place, teaching kids about the history of the town, the history of armories, mm -hmm. um, the history of, of, of the wars that our men and women went to fight for. Mm -hmm. I mean, so it's a, a little bit different than ordinary stuff. It but is. I think for the town, which is very driven by tourism, maybe it, they came to the conclusion that this has some tourist value, and so they could then but wrap their arms around it. I think they appreciate it. the work. I do. I think there's an appreciation for what we've done, my board and I and, and volunteers have done. Um, to get this, you know, up in, first of all, in decent shape, because it, it wasn't, um, and up to code, um, useful. Mm -hmm. um, we attract a lot of tourists. Tours are free, by the way. And oh, we're, we're okay. only open Mondays and Thursdays, 9 to 4, and by appointment. And that's on the website, westerlyarmory.com. Okay. So, uh, no, it's... Um, yeah, I think people appreciate it more every day. Uh, it takes a while. It's it's like that whole smoking thing we talked about. Uh, yes. It's It just takes a while to get it back to where it was. It'll never be quite the same because it, it, it's just never going to be well, like it was. But uh, it, it's going to be a place where community can meet. Um, people will have memories. We have two high school, well, one, t they just started college this year. Um, they were two high school students. Now one's college, one's high school on our board. And oh, okay. the one that went to college was our secretary, and now the other one is our secretary, and she's 16. Mm -hmm. And they do a wonderful job, and they help with events and so on, and they're responsible. We make them responsible for certain things. That's wonderful. So That's that they wonderful. don't just show up. I mean, you know, we, we want them to feel a part of it. They are a part of it, and mm -hmm. we want generations to appreciate this because uh, they haven't been in there. Uh, we've worked with the high school, Wesley High School. Um, we've worked with a couple of the history teachers there, and we've had events. We had Flag Day events. We had the D-Day event. Oh, and so okay. On. And it's a way of their teaching history. And we try to let them run it. We're there. We open, and, you know, we, we were a little bit of it, but um, we want them to be a part and, and feel. Because they have ownership of the armory, too. I mm -hmm. like people to think that... Um, they have ownership of this building in a certain way. Right. Although I don't want them to paint it pink or anything, so we're not going to do that. So, <laughs> But if people were uh, interested in having their students come and uh, they would just contact you? Yeah, they should contact you because we've got to, yeah, we've got to kind of know they're coming to so to prepare. Of course, these days everything is harder. Oh, but, yes. But yes. once COVID is over, no, we've had a lot of student tours. Uh, we do actually... Um, Every, I don't know, once or twice a year, we, we get people who have um, disabilities come, and um, it's always interesting to watch how they respond. I find it fascinating mm -hmm. because their minds work very differently. Not always badly, but just differently. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's fascinating to see how they, uh, when they see something, how they react to it. So, yeah, we're... Um, uh, we're we're open to a lot of different things. I, I like the idea that it's a universal building. You know, it's not a, a snobby building, mm -hmm. and uh, but it's it, it's meant for it's meant for everyone. Yeah, it's uh, there's it's all kind all kinds of people went there. All kinds of people served our nation, mm -hmm. and I like that. That's now uh, you were talking about the presentations you make. Are you, are your presentations open to the public, or are these special groups, or can uh, a group well, hire you to do a presentation? Yeah, I, I kind of rent out now. Actually, uh, most of the money goes to the armory as it is, because I usually take my books and games. And people, once I've done like if I do my presentation called Roadmap, which I have a game called Roadmap, 
after the presentation, people are scooping those up. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and uh, so we make a lot of money for the Armory. I've raised over $100,000 with my uh, books. So you, you, when you buy a book, when someone buys your books, the money actually is going to the Armory? Well, the only I try to get my money back on the, the production. The, okay, right. I try. I don't always. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I, in most cases, I do very well with that. But, um, you know, it takes a while because I have to, you can't do just make a hundred of them because it would be too costly. Mm -hmm. You'd have to sell the thing for 50 bucks or, or $100 right, or right. something, and you can't do that. So I usually do uh, 1,000, 2,000, 5,000 of any one thing, yeah. Um, with with Crow, we, we did 10,000 initially, and we did another 10,000. And so we, I think we're into another 5,000 5, now with my book. So, um, yeah, but you know, people can contact me through wesleyarmory.com. Um, if you use the, it has our uh, email on there, do it by email, and uh, I, I will get the email and, and respond. But I do mostly state and national conferences. Mm -hmm. I did the uh, national conference for secretaries of state when they came in 2010, and they liked my presentation so much that they invited me to their states, and I toured the nation, and they hosted me, which was, which was very nice. Um, that was fun. I did five presentations in Montana alone. And oh my gosh! What a great, if I couldn't live in Rhode Island, I'd live in Montana. <laughs> so it's about as different as you can get. Yeah, but they're both they're both terrific. Well, actually, and I like Arkansas, and people wouldn't believe that, but Arkansas, they're just sometimes you just warm up to something, you, mm -hmm. you know. And it, it was they're, they're wonderful people. Well, actually, everybody was wonderful. I have no complaints. Great do you people. have a, as an armory with its historic value? Do you have any relationship? with actually the Westerly uh, Historic Society? Well, um, the Historical Society has been, been, you know, we work with them too a bit. The Historical Society and the Babcock Smith House are sort of interrelated. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a long story about the trust and why they can't be together or something. I never did quite understand it, but they, they've been wonderful. And uh, they had their, what was it, their 100? It must have been more than that, but 100th anniversary there. I was away when, it's what, I'm rarely away, but I was away when they had that. They had that at the armory. Okay. Uh, and uh, no, uh, the, most of them are members of the armory too, as well as I'm a member of Wesley it's, Historical it's Society right. and the right. Babcock Smith House. Right. And I'm a member of the Warwick Historical Society. <laughs> so right. They kind of get around, but it's good. It's nice that we support each other because history things are, are harder to support than things that are, I don't know, more um, touching. You know health problems mm -hmm. or that sort right, of thing. Right, disease yeah. things, yes, yeah. right, exactly. And kids and problems. You can understand that. Yes, right. I'm a great bird person, and I, I do support Rhode Island Audubon, and uh, uh, I'm in several bird societies now. So, um, But are, are you available to do presentations if somebody yeah, saw if this show? Yeah, they contact me, yeah, yeah. I, I do rent out, yeah, uh, and I do a lot of state and national conferences. I did one, was it a year and a half ago? Uh, I was up in Providence at one of the hotels. They had college students from the whole Northeast there, the uh, upper level college students. It was a special, um, they, they do it in a different city each year. Okay. And I had to do one on Providence. They, they would do it in a city, but I, I think of Rhode Island as a city state. Mm -hmm. So I gave them Rhode Island, then I moved into Providence. So I, I created that one especially for them. Mm -hmm. And I made it so that it was very youthful. I, ha I didn't do a lot of this Zoom thing, and uh, uh, I, I had some magical things happen during it, but, you know, before, because it was a younger group. But, right, uh, right. Um, a little more razzle-dazzle. <laughs> yeah, but I did one, like, for the uh, Naval um, Academy Alumni Association over in Newport, and uh, they said uh, it was their favorite presentation, so... Um, because it's it's fun. It, uh, I did Little Rhodey in the other 49, which compares Rhode Island to the other 49 states. Right. And... Um, the reason I'm proud of that was that they have really toured for sure, those people in that mm -hmm. alumni association. And they really enjoyed seeing all the states and, and Rhode Island and, and so forth. It's, it's fun. But uh, yeah, I, I do uh, 12 different presentations and uh, I do one in the historic armories of Rhode Island, all 18 of them. And people, a lot of women get dragged to that by their husbands. Mm -hmm. And they said, gee, we really like this one. <laughs> you know, it, uh, because it's like touring the state, and, and the buildings are, are absolutely fascinating to look at, uh, the pictures. I usually stand in the back of the room. Now I've learned one, one thing we've got to know, uh, and I'm, I'm partially, well, I lost hearing when I was 23 in this year with a virus. Oh. Maybe it was the coronavirus oh. early. I don't know what it was. <laughs> but anyhow, and the other one is, is diffi difficult at this point. But um, uh, people who are, have hearing difficulties hear better behind them 
than they do in front of them. Oh, so, so you like, talk behind them. So I stand behind because I'm showing the pictures. They're really not looking at me anyhow. Right, So, exactly. I mean, I'm, I'm up there. There they are, on, uh, you know, looking at the screen, and uh, we have the best time. I do um, one called Rhode Island Ease, which we make fun of our language. I do Roadmap, which is geographical. I do I Am Rhode Island, which is trivia. Um, there, 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 there are lots of fun. I do First, Best, and Uniques uh, of Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. and so, on. so it's and people like them because they're they're easy. I did one at the Savoy Bookstore. They asked me to come down and do one because they they do they sell a lot of my products, my games, and my books. So mm -hmm. I did did one for them. Um, and I, I have done them for Rotary and organizations. I've done free ones, but I normally, you know, I'm older now. I, I charge, I, you know, uh, between the, the time you spend going and sitting through, you usually have to sit through lunch or dinner or whatever it is, and at least you get a dinner or lunch. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, it's a, it's a long time. You know, you have to sit through meetings and so forth. But, uh, yeah, uh, but I like doing the national conference. They'll bring me in, and, uh, and that's always fun um, to do. Do you find that there's more interest uh, of late in things like historic armories than, you know, t 10, 20 well, years ago? I it's hard for me because I'm so in tune with the armories that anything, the word armory comes up and I just, you know, my license plate is armory. Yes, I, I mean, saw so, it outside. Uh, you know, it's just, um, I just notice it, so I don't know what other people are noticing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just sensitive to it. Uh, my my classes at CCRI for all those years heard about it, so I figure you know at least I'm getting the word out. Yeah, um, I always had a picture in my I, I wrote my own technical writing textbooks too, and I always had one picture of the armory somewhere in that book. <laughs> so <laughs> so it was kind of fun. But yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's fun. I think uh, people don't realize like in Rhode Island, uh, some of those eighteen historic armories are um, well. We have the old the oldest extant armory in Rhode Island is was built in um, uh, eighteen. Um, what am I saying here? Yes, eighteen uh, thirty six, eighteen thirty five, thirty six. It was a two year thing. Um, Bridge the two years, and it's owned by the Newport Artillery. The Newport Artillery. Uh, you can go and visit that. They're usually, well, they're open more in summers, but they're open Saturdays, I think, very often and by appointment. They have one of the largest um, uh, uh, collections of uniforms, world uniforms, not just the United States. Mm. Um, and it's gorgeous. Plus, they have uh, four cannon made by Paul Revere. Um, Is that the ones they use for the uh, for the June? Yeah, event? I don't think that I'm not sure they bring the one of the Revere cannons down because they have other cannons. Yes, oh, they're very careful with those particular cannons. They do take them out, but they're especially careful with them. Yeah, uh, when Wesley does their pops concert. Yeah, there yeah. is. A, Did they do that this year? No. Because they, I remember they moved it to September at one point. Because they usually do it in June. In June, the third, the third yeah. Saturday in June. Yeah. No. Well, it's uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Because that's a everybody's gonna. That's a large right crowd. Right on top of yeah. each other. You right. just have to watch, not too big a crowd, and I think we'll we'll be okay. Just take care. Um, there's going to be a risk. There's a risk factor in anything. I always tell uh, folks that I taught for 47 years and. Kids would come in with everything from colds to flu to whatever, and right. I never missed a day of class. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, some people ca are, are catch things more. Right. Too, they're more they're susceptible. More, yeah, yeah. Right. They're more yeah, vulnerable. They absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But we want people to come from everywhere, a lot of <laughs> Connecticut people, as well as Rhode Island people, to come November 1st. Right. Lovely Sunday. We hope the weather's nice. Who knows what it's going to be. And uh, to enjoy from 10 o'clock in the morning to 3 p.m. in the afternoon, there'll be... Uh, there'll free admission. Free admission. Uh, there'll be crafters. There'll be jewelry makers. There'll antiques. Be antiques. And, of course... And authors. And, of course, <laughs> authors. You know, everybody, come and meet Harriet Grayson, otherwise known as Anastasia Goodman. Um, and you can sh see my books, and you can also have a great opportunity to look at Roberta's many, many books and puzzles and games that she's created. This is a woman with a wonderful imagination. I mean, who does things like this? I mean, it's a, it, uh, <laughs> it's a mountain of information about a teeny little state, which only goes to show you that if you come and become dedicated to doing something well and, de and, and use your time wisely, you can you can become knowledgeable, really knowledgeable about a particular kind of uh, history, event, people, culture, whatever. 
and you can go around and write books and also to give lectures on these things. The world needs people like that, absolutely. So I'm always thrilled to have you on my show. This is only maybe only the second time you've come on my show. Oh, it's, it's, thank you for having me, and uh, thank you for the armory, too. And uh, I hope people do come to the show. Absolutely. They get to see you. They get to see me. They get That's to see the armory. And, uh, what, yeah. and, and nice things to eat. Uh, and my, my new game is perfect for Thanksgiving. Oh, actually, any of the games are if you're from Rhode Island. If, if you're not from Rhode Island, I have a game that you can play called Roadblog, even if you're not from Rhode Island. Okay. But you'll learn about Rhode Island from playing the game. Right, right, <laughs> right. <laughs> so that's important. But I, I think we'll have a good time at the Armory. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So I want everybody, Sunday, Sunday, this, this coming Sunday, November 1, come on down to the Westerly Armory. It's in downtown. It's actually within walking. I mean, it's just a few feet from the train station if you're not completely familiar with, uh, with Westerly. And there's a whole bunch of other shops. And it just so happens, coincidence. Coincidentally. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> uh, there will be also some restaurants having their um, eating outside. There, that's going on as part of a Westerly Chamber event in the downtown Westerly. So you can actually, if you want, you can get a lovely meal, walk a few blocks, and right there is the armory. Go in there and have a good time. So I thank you for, for joining me. Thank you. I hope people come on out. And this is Harriet Grayson your host and producer for Community Culture Showcase. Come and join us November 1st and come and see some more shows. Thank you.